Okay, so who's ready to build at home with me using scrap wood? Welcome back to Never Skip Brunch. Today I'm showing you how to make these super cute quote mark bookends with some leftover plywood as well as teaching you how to make templates for cutting wood that remove totally cleanly, no sanding required. So this project is actually part of a collaboration that my friend Sam from DIY Huntress put together. I'm teaming up with a bunch of DIYers and makers, and we're showing you projects that you can make from home using scrap wood. I will link all the other videos below so you can check out all the other projects and hopefully find something that you can build at home as well. Okay, so I seem to have accumulated a ton of plywood. <laughs> I've been using it for a lot of projects within the past year, like my pegboard wall and my giant headboard, so I have a lot of just little pieces laying around, and I wanted to challenge myself to turn those into a decor piece that's really chic and really polished and doesn't look like it was made from plywood. <laughs> So the strategy for this project is to cut some quote marks out of plywood, stack them all up, and glue them together to make a block, and then leave that side unfinished so the stripes of the plywood become kind of a design element and something that's intentional versus looking unfinished. So we need to make a template and then cut the pieces out, glue them together, sand them, and then finish them. So to make my template, I just played around with a bunch of different fonts on my computer till I found something I loved. And the good news is I'm making this template available to you guys for free. So you can recreate this project without having to try to figure out how to make your own template. I will add a link in the description below where you can go to download that. It just prints out on regular printer paper so you can print it at home super easily. Okay, so when using a paper template to cut things out of wood, you have to really secure it to your piece. Otherwise it will flap all over and you won't be able to follow the line at all. So I used to just put spray adhesive on the back of the paper and then stick it directly to my piece of wood. And then after I finished cutting it, I would have to sand it all off, but I now use a way easier method that comes off super cleanly. So all you do is take a piece of contact paper and you're gonna just apply it straight onto your plywood piece, make sure it's stuck down. And then you can go ahead and spray adhesive the back of that paper and then stick it to the contact paper. This is basically a giant DIY sticker. And as you'll see here in a little bit, it peels off really easily, totally clean. So I wanted to make sure my pieces were exact replicas of each other. So when I stack them all up and glue them together, I don't have a ton of reshaping to do. So ideally I would have been able to cut all four pieces at once but I'm using a scroll saw and it's not that tall, so I basically had to cut just two boards at a time. If you're using a different saw, like a jigsaw, you might be able to get it all in one go. But here's the method for doing it if you need to break it down. So I attached my template to one board and stacked that board up with another piece of plywood and then attached it using screws in those dead space areas that are gonna be scrap once I cut out my piece. And that allowed me to cut out two boards at once and hold those boards really, really securely together so nothing was wobbling. were cut out, I glued each of them to another piece of plywood using wood glue, added some clamps to secure it while it dried. Once those were finished drying, I used that as my new template to cut out another piece.
on each quilt mark has four pieces of plywood that are glued together to form this block. So once all the glue was dry, I realized that there were some little areas in the plywood that were missing, so I needed to fill them in with wood filler. However, I don't really like working with the wood filler that you can find in a tub. I find that it flakes super easy, the finish is always different, and it just doesn't really look like wood. So instead, I'm using a new method that I learned where you take a little bit of the sawdust from your sander bag, mix it together with wood glue, and then use that as your wood filler. It dries a little bit harder, and it also is a perfect match for your project because you're using the sawdust from the same wood that you're making your project out of. Once that was dry, I sanded it again just to get it super, super smooth. And if you're new to sandpaper grits, I used 80 grit for more of my shaping, getting those edges and those imperfections from the different cut pieces all smoothed out. Then I bumped up to 100 for a little bit more smoothing and shaping. And then finally I went up to 220 to give it that super smooth finish before painting and sealing. So I painted the fronts with a matte black paint. I wanted this to be kind of a nod to ink and look like typeface. So I ended up using this chalkboard paint from Target, but it's really thick. So that allowed me to get a nice crisp edge without paint spilling over the edge or leaking everywhere because I wanted to keep those sides unfinished. Once the paint was dry, I sealed the edges with a matte polyurethane just to finish it off. And let me tell you, I really love how the sides turned out. It took that unfinished, kind of inexpensive look of plywood and made it look very intentional and striped and patterned. And it also looks like the edge of a book, all the different pages. So that's just another really fun design detail that made these bookends special. Okay, are you ready to see how they look in this space? video and if you did give it a thumbs up down below and then hit that red subscribe button so you can stay in the loop with more fun and fresh projects just like this. P.S. If you want the opportunity for some behind the scenes clips or getting to weigh in on my projects in real time you should follow me on Instagram because I have different polls and stories and different ways you can vote and weigh in and help me make design decisions for all the projects that I publish on here. You can find me at Never Skip Brunch, so go follow along and let me know what you think. Be sure to check out all the other amazing build at home projects that are in that playlist that I linked below so you can binge it because they're amazing. a super cute it's going to be super cute he's really really cute so you can check out because you're using the sawdust 